dirty back alley. Dirty. Manic. Psychotic. He's gone over the edge. Hello? Uh, it's being me. Let's get straight to it. Come on, you're back. I'm dead. Merry Christmas, everybody. This is the Are you going to put some Christmas music over this yeah, bit? I oh, no, I meant the... So how come you can do that when you, you can't? About, oh. You can't. You're keeping this it in. Good. Just no one gives a shit. No, well, that's true. Uh, Unless no, 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 no. our no, one no, listener no. happens to be a legal... Mm. Guru for um, who is it that do that? I, I don't know. What get the ghost. Get the ghost. every time I say that, you oh, never I thought, do. I, I genuinely thought you were saying, uh, get the ghost was the name, name of the band. Um, oh get the ghost, the waitresses, Christmas wrapping. This yes, Merry the... Christmas. Hey, everyone, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. This is the Christmas. <laughs> This is the Christmas episode. You just um, you stroke in your face. Ho- horror movies with TNA Christmas special, and we thought we'd pick on a Christmas horror movie and talk about it. Yeah. Uh, very quickly, um, give me some of your favourite Christmas horror movies. <sighs> well, Black Christmas. We'll go with that. Oh, all right, all right. Yeah. Well, no, a, I was going to classic. say an amusing one rather than a. Uh, well, you know. Uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night. No, I have never. I still haven't seen any of them. I will get round to them. Gremlins. That's class. class as a I was going to say Gremlins. Movie. Well, that is my favourite. It's one of my favourite films, and it is a horror movie. You can get it fucked. Yeah, little Gremlins and everything. Yeah. What else? I Krampus is all right. I've not seen it. Any good? It's. I mean, there's loads of films called Krampus, but there's that. It's a comedy horror one. Yes, yeah, okay. It's all right. Okay, so that's our overview. Yeah, uh, Christmas horror films. Is Die Hard a Christmas film? Well, not horror. Well, not horror. Horrifying. Yeah. No, I just thought I'd throw that in. I don't give a shit. So that's that then. <laughs> well, this episode we're going to talk about Christmas Evil. Or the, you better watch out. Or Terror in Toyland from 1980. Taglines. The night he dropped in, actually, I read the You Better Believe in Santa or He'll Slay You. Um, Sounds like one we would make up. <laughs> better watch out, better not cry, or you may die. There's another tagline. <laughs> <gasps> um, do you, this film anyway. was seized under Section 3 of the Obscene Publications Act from of uh, 59 during the Video Nasties. Watch, Panic. <laughs> yeah, what watching it doesn't make any sense. Uh, there, there is, there is it's, no, it's a very, well, there's one shocking bit that comes out of nowhere yeah. oh, in yeah. the middle of the film. Yeah, yeah. Um, in the middle of the film. I guess if you had a video cover and it, again, like most of these things, it's meant to be seasonal and a nice film, but it's got a killer Santa Claus. So any of them are sounding bad. And this is, uh, even though there's humorous bits in it, because I get there is a bit of quite a lot of dark comedy and it's fucking weird at the end. It is darker than some of them. It is mate. It's a bit like Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, but for a bloke that really likes he, Santa Claus because it just he, follows he Harry want, all the time. He wants to be the next Santa. Yes, it's it, we follow this man as his life. It's totally from his <laughs> point of view, really, isn't yes. it? Yeah, yeah. Directed by Lewis Jackson and uh, written by Lewis Jackson. J- yes, and. Um, it was written. Um, <laughs> starring Brandon Margett, or Margay, Margett, Margett as Harry Stadling. It's mainly on him, and I think he does a very good job. I do as well, yeah. I quite liked him. He was in Dress to Kill, apparently, oh, when I looked he? up. Yeah, uh, I, don't, uh, I can't tell you who he was in it. And then his brother, play um, Philip, played by Jeffrey Moon. Yeah, he's more of a well-known actor. He was in the... Before. Yes, he was in The Mist... Oh, he's a, he's a Walking Dead. He's the guy with the beard, isn't he? In oh, Walking okay. Dead. Shawshank Redemption. Again, I don't know where in the films he was, but Shawshank the Redemption. And he was in The Green Mile as well. I think the yeah. directors of those, he did a few films. Yeah, Frank Darabont. I like yes. Frank Darabont. He, he, he fell out with Hollywood a little bit for whatever reason. I'm not sure, but yeah. Um, anything else before I dive straight into the story? Uh 
this Christmas, you better believe in Santorus Slayer. Yeah, you've already said that. I kind of get why if you've not seen it and you saw the cover, you would ban it at the time because it looks like an underground kind of dodgy, grimy film. And it, it really isn't. I don't think anyway. It's not grim. Quite f- far from it, I think. It has a pleasant message running throughout. Yeah. We start 1947, a beautiful flashback, New Jersey, Christmas Eve. Can I say uh, New Jersey? If you fucking want. Towards the night before Christmas and all through the house, etc. All that kind all of All that thing. bullshit. Yeah, Harry and Philip and Mum Jackie are watching through the banister, stair banister, as Santa drops down yeah, the chimney. This is, bit, this is a bit that didn't make a lot of sense, but go on. Down comes Santa. Yeah, he, he literally comes down the chimney and goes... Yes, Whoop. he drops down. Yeah. Pops down. Shit mm. Santa. Shit looking Santa. It's a cosy Xmas scene, though, isn't it? Gets cosier. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> yes. They're watching him for a bit, eating the food that they've left out, you know, traditional fam, you know, Christmas scene. And then, in a flash, they're gone. I think th- That was that after was, he buggers off. Yeah, though, yeah I, I, after he kind of goes, the two boys argue. Philip says it was Dad, dressed as Santa. Harry believes That it wasn't was my Santa. daddy. Yeah, when he goes, that yeah. wasn't my daddy. Shall I do that again? That Harry wasn't is- my daddy. Jump, <laughs> stop interrupting me. that wasn't my daddy okay harry then creeps back down and spies on santa groping mummy i've seen santa fucking (laughs) he's definitely a legs man he's there for about five minutes groping his mum's legs he is there for quite a while being a bit randy isn't he randy santa i used to know i think i used to work with a randy santa um when Harry... Met Sally. Um, when, when Harry met Santa... Yes. Um, spies on Santa, groping mummy. He gets quite upset, understandably. <laughs> oh, is that... Yeah, I'm yeah, saying, good, yeah. <laughs> this, I quite liked, when Harry storms uh, off, uh, there's quite a nice shot of the, uh, the snow globe in, in the, the fall. foreground. Yes, and uh, I'm going to make mention, it may, and a lot of people make mention, the shots in it are quite arty. Yeah. Although... Uh, at the same time, some of the cutting is arty as well, but also a little bit shit. I, I think there's a mix in, in of every... Of arty and shit. Yes, in every bit. It's some a fine shot, line. Yeah, well, it fine is. Fine line yeah. of shit and art. Harry's traumatised. He cuts his hand with a piece of the broken snow globe because he dashes <laughs> it. Hey, this dashes is a... Him. Dashes it. He dashes it to the ground. Ah, oh, you can't fall out, can you? Yeah. He cuts his hand... And the blood drips on the snow globe, snowy roof I of the house. When it dripped on the roof, I thought it looked a bit like Santa on the roof. There was like a white bit with a red Santa suit Get on. Fucked. <laughs> credits roll. Wind blows. Christmas evil. I quite like the credits. I thought it was very Christmassy, very nice. Present. 1980. Oh, and I like that as well. Present. As in Christmas present. Am I explaining this? Does oh, it need explaining no, this? No, no, I quite continue. like that. I didn't even get that. I did. Well, um, it said... The... It, does, it doesn't say... He says the present, but it doesn't say yes. 1980s, it's me saying that, because that's when it is. Harry seems to be living his life as the new Santa. Well, is he it... wakes up in his Santa jammies. Yes. This is still November as well, so we get the feeling mm. that all year round he's like this. Well, it, it kind of makes sense, because he works in a toy sh- uh, a toy well. factory yeah. and it does say on a calendar 55 days to Christmas so we do know it's well well off Christmas at that point but there is point. a bit of dancing around for a good uh, three or four minutes oh so yeah he does a little yeah. Christmas jig and he's got Christmas music on constantly it, fuck it. I there mean I love lot... Christmas but fuck me that drive me <laughs> the wall there is long takes on uh, Brandon doing a lot of this stuff so good on him he has to act his socks off yes he his, does good his Christmas socks off so we get the feeling he believes he's going to be the next true Santa. Soon as he's up, he puts Christmas jingles on. Even when he's having a shave, he lavers himself up. I thought he was going to say having a shit. Even when he's having a shit, he lavers himself up for a shave, but he yeah. keeps 
chuckling to himself because he kind of looks like Santa in the mirror. Yeah. But at one point when he's having the shave, he cuts himself and it gives us a quick flashback to when he cut his hand when he was a child. So we get that feeling that he's still traumatised by what happened 30 years yeah, previously. Yeah, I mean, we would have worked that out by him still being caught in the Santa Crazy. realm. Yes. He's also, we start to see him also making himself a Santa costume, which is actually quite a good one. He's got quite a good Santa costume. Yeah. Oh, he, there's a thing about him humming and singing tunes and him finding the right notes to music. That'll come back later, but yeah. that's all absolutely. Are we going to mention the bit where he goes up on the roof and looks at kids through binoculars? Yeah, a bit dodgy. So we see him then start to spy on the local kids making a list of naughty and nice children. One child he sees is taking out the trash, and obviously they go into the good book, and he's adding names all the time to the good and bad book throughout the film. However, Moss Garcia is looking at Penthouse. He goes straight in the naughty boy's book, not happy with him at all. And at that point, there's jarring music as yeah, because when he sees Moss Garcia, because he's actually left the house, he's kind of peeking off. I think it must be the roof of the building. Yeah, um, he's got a pair and then of binoculars. He has got a pair of pretty binoculars, and there's jarring music as Harry runs back home to enter the names into his bad and good book. It, at one point, he puts for Moss Garcia looking at Penthouse. He puts Moss has got negative body hygiene, but we are talking about a minor. There's no minors. We're talking about a in the pits <laughs> again. That sounds it's, wrong. It's the pits. Oh. Anyway, so yeah, so he's spying on the children. <clears throat> he's kind of doing a more primitive version of what Santa would do because generally yeah. Santa just knows. Yeah, whereas not... he has to trawl the neighbourhood and actually. I know. Um, it he, is sounding wrong. He has though. to do a staker and actually gather evidence. But he, he is in 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 this. He he uh, he is on the side of the kids. He's not a pervo. No, it's completely yeah, it's harmless. Very in, he's very we innocent, at least in that. But respect. with a, a, a cynical 2023 view on it, he does appear to be a pedo. Yeah. But with, you know. yeah. It was the 80s. Anyway, Jolly Dream Toy Factory. This is where Harry works. The only person interested in good, well-made toys is Harry. And everybody else at the factory... Couldn't when he give works, less of a shiny shit. They just want to make a book and get by with producing tat. But obviously Harry, as the next Santa, wants to make good quality toys for the kids. Harry's generally also, for this reason, because he keeps lecturing everybody else at work, is the butt of everybody's jokes as well. Frank yeah, is very put upon. Uh, he is work. very put upon. And <laughs> Frank, one of his co-workers, even dupes Harry into covering for him on his night shift because Frank tells him some bullshit about him going away with his wife. But actually, as we learn later on, he's actually just going to the bo local bar. So Harry fills in for him, um, which pisses Harry off. And Frank also makes it into the bad boy's book. Yeah. It shows some quite boring scenes where yeah, Frank then right. does the night shift where he's clipping to be honest I thought the job looked alright he's clipping riders onto motorbikes on some kind of production line he that's an evil right. kind of rip -offs. but every so often the, the soundtrack quite fun I'm going to say fun it's not great where there's kind of noises whistles jarring know, screeches there's three people did the soundtrack on this I yeah I mean it feels like only half a person did it <laughs> but go on <laughs> It's very yeah, yeah. It's, quality, it's not great. I, I thought those little bells and whistles, no, bells and whistles, where the kind of the jarring bits, which I thought worked quite well to try and emphasise his anger and frustration and things like that. It kind yeah, of works. So it kind of works. All right. Anyway, when Harry gets home from work, he's incandescent with rage, and Brandon's acting goes into overdrive. He, he grips a toy figure um, as he hums. Santa Claus is coming to town. And that goes on for a while as he kind of grips see, it. I thought it was better. Watch out. Yeah. Is that later? Uh... Yeah, you better watch out. Santa oh. Claus. It's the same song. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's that one. It's that one. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. Mate. And, and he kind of grips this 
and he gets more and more kind of almost psychotic and angry and stuff, which I thought was all right. I thought it was ace, really. Yeah. He spies on his brother then and the yeah. family. I think he's spying through the window at his brother, Phil. Obviously, we saw Phil at the beginning of the film as he's having a kind of idyllic family mm. Christmas scene. Well, although he, then he gets it on with his wife as well and Harry continues to watch. Yeah, I know. Which um, he gets sexually... Well, <laughs> I put then, then it goes to, to Harry um, watching the Thanksgiving parade. He almost seems like he's getting sexually aroused yeah. watching that. He's getting his rocks off there when he sees Santa on the parade. And he cancels Thanksgiving with his brother. Yeah. Phil gets more and more increasingly frustrated by Harry's behaviour throughout the film. His wife is a little more understanding, but Phil is not so Yeah, much. it comes to a crescendo, doesn't it? Later yes. On. Harry continues to make his own Santa outfit lovingly and paints a Santa sleigh on the side of his transit van. Throughout this, he keeps trying to memorise all the kids and all the presents. Because don't forget, Santa would have all the elves and everybody to help him out. But he's a one-man operation, isn't he? He's having to remember all the fucking, you know, Moss is getting fuck all. Susie, Kendall, she's getting... And this is where he goes around a kid's house with mud on his face. Mosses. (laughs) <laughs> this is a bit I thought what the fuck yes then Moss Garcia um, Harry makes his way to Moss Garcia's house he blacks up I mean he, he does he puts I, mud on his face but it's very dark I don't know if this is like know. a traditional Santa story where he almost marks the house of the bad kids I, I'd be interested to know because <clears> he, he, he's got he, two hands and he kisses the outside wooden white yeah, wall yeah he, he like marks right. it like he's a burglar because well, he's going to come back to this address later on he kind of covers his face in shit and then leaves an imprint well, on like the side in of Texas the bill Texas Chainsaw where that where the guy cuts his hand open and wipes on the truck yeah to, to mark, mark it, it. Yeah. no to mark- you're talking shit <laughs> <laughs> anyway yeah so he blacks up and marks Moss's house Black Santa cool anyway um, then he Tries to grab him, but doesn't really sort of grab him in front of his face. He hides in some bushes then, doesn't he? Yeah, across his house. Doctor. And then Harry throws a punch at him to scare him. Well, no, I think he was meant to... Because he, he goes, the kid goes, oh, he tried to grab me. I think it was meant to be some kind of weird, feeble grab. He, yes. You, I mean, the punch later and on. People will see punch. this. <laughs> and people will see this when they watch the film. He kind of almost... <laughs> Air punches in front of Moss's face because Moss thinks he's seen something in the bushes. He goes to investigate and then when he gets near to the bushes, Harry throws a punch out towards him and scares him, shocks him. I don't think he's going to punch the kid. Right in the face. (laughs) Harry manufactures lead and or lead or tin soldiers at his house because I think he's dissatisfied by the quality. I watched... The deleted scenes, God, oh, I, I went above and beyond here. Where did you, on YouTube? On YouTube. But there is deleted scenes where he explains more. It plays on more about the fact that the factory is doesn't give a shit about the quality of the toys. There's a scene where it's got some kids in a room where they're testing the toys on the kids and the kids are just breaking the plastic. Oh. And Harry says, you need to make stronger toys like tin toys or metal toys oh, and right, then right. it has the bit where he's actually making them in his in his apartment so make them out of lead yeah so when they suck upon <laughs> them no they're, they're it. dead yeah. oh yeah well no it might have explained that a bit but there's to be honest there's other bits that could have been cut out that yeah but i, don't, I can yeah it's, it's, it's not it's not it's not that type of it's not a slasher so it's no. not that type of film. No, I don't. I don't think it really needs to explain it. Well, there's a director's cut, isn't there? There's oh well, maybe like, that includes yeah. it. And actually, I think the deleted scenes were from. And I'm looking back at my notes. You better watch out. So maybe that version is, yeah, the ex, the longer version of it. I don't know. Anyway, so there's a bit where he looks at himself in a locker mirror and he winks at himself impishly, and then. He instantly, he kind of then glares, he kind of brings his hand down and he goes from being happy to almost yeah. a bit psychotic, which I thought was okay. Because then say, Harry... it is, it is like, it is, it's got that sense, obviously nowhere near as grim as Henry Portrait, a serial killer, but it does stay with him. You could call it like maniac, but again, the original maniac. The where, Joe Spinelli one. Yeah, where yeah. it's staying with that generally that point of view all the way through I, that's it. A, I didn't think of the Henry one, but that's actually not a bad comparison where you follow him as he kind of 
you know he's not quite yeah, and he right, just gets, and, and, he's, he's, and it's sort of his situation. You see him collapsing, but you keep and, seeing it outside of them as well. Obviously, you see what he's seeing and the memories and all that, but generally, you're still just following that person. So that that I thought that was interesting, but it couldn't be a slasher because obviously, if you're following that person, it, it, you can't. Yeah. There's, it, no, there's no, there's no, there's no twist. There's no, no. You, <laughs> you know when he's coming because you're there's constantly no following. There's no suspicion or no. misdirection. He, he is, yeah, Harry. He is Harry. <laughs> Harry's at the Christmas party where he ends up talking to a couple of execs. And they have this scheme to gift toys to the kids at the local hospital. This angers Harry because they think it's more of a publicity thing. Mm. They don't really seem to care. And he's more bothered about just giving good quality toys to the kids. So he's the tr- the next true Santa, isn't he? Yeah. He is. Yeah. And then your next thing you know is filling up sacks full of dirt. Not poo, but dirt. And a good background. Oh, mm. can, can I just... Because we can put that back in afterwards. Let no, me just say. No, you can't. At the party, Harry tells a co-worker that he's been trying to find the notes to the tune, to which the co-worker replies, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Which I thought was quite good, because yeah. I... Ju- no, no I was, one does. No and that's because he's mental. Does. And it, it's, it, well, he it doesn't need to explain it. He, he's going around the twist. Yeah, I like it. You already said he then goes and fills up sacks with toys he's stolen from the factory for the good and a bag of shit for the badens. Well, it, no, it's not literally shit. It's, well, it's do- soil. It's dirt, soil. Isn't it? But, but it's I, I like the way, because you've got the uh, the background of power station, the water and all that in the background. I thought that was a good shot. Christmas Eve. No. Harry's... Oh, no, hang on. Get fucked. You missed the bit where he glues his beard on. Yeah, no. That's not before Christmas Eve. No, no, this is it. Christmas Eve. No. Listen, Christmas Eve and Harry's donning his gear. Now, Wikipedia says that whilst he's gluing his beard on, he enters a fugue state. I don't know what fugue meant. F-U-G-U-E. It's it's like a musical state. I I think it's... (laughs) They were... On Wikipedia, they were saying when he put his beard on, he almost went into a... Almost a state of forgetting who he was, and he started at that point uh, to believe he was Santa. Fugue. Well, he, he just keeps pulling at his glued-on beard, yeah, and then laughing. Manic, psychotic. He's gone over the edge. He's gone around the twist. Christmas Eve. Harry's breaking into houses and dumping tat and bags of shit, particularly Moscow Garcia, in, in people's houses. When he breaks in, the music sounds a lot like OMD's Enola Gay. <laughs> but th- this is a good bit because he has a knife as a Santa and then pulls it out and thinks, oh, what's he going to do? And all he does is unwrap some presents. Yes, yeah, so he looks menacing, doesn't he? Yeah, and they used it on a video cover, I think. Christmas Evil. We're having a vote on this. Harry's breaking into houses. So he's spreading good cheer, isn't he? And he leaves the metal soldiers he's made with the big knives and just starts chucking them. Does notice those plastic things that he was evil can evilly rip offs. He knows that and laughs and then chucks them away. Yes, he chucks them to one side. Oh, Basically, he also makes his way to the um, the hospital yep. to hand out gifts. I mean, how this old was that? Nuts. How old was that fucking security guard as well? Oh, well no, that's what I'm going to do when I retire. Well, yes, mm-hmm. yes, working at the children's hospital. Yeah, right. I'm going to talk about this bit because this is probably my favourite scene out of all of it, the entire film. Out of every Christmas film ever made. Well, maybe. Um, so he, do, he, he's security guard, he goes, oh, let me in and I'm, we can, it, it's just boring. But he gives him a present. The security guard goes, oh, hang on a second. I'll see if I can get them out or whatever. You stay there, don't come in. And he goes, don't worry. And then starts shouting to himself, Merry Christmas. Ho, and ho, you, ho, ho. And you see one... F- and you do see one little bit of snowflake go past him as he says that. And he keeps going, Merry Christmas. And then walks the other way and he's pacing. And he just keeps saying it until he gets more Father Christmassy. And going, Merry Christmas. <laughs> it's like he's practising and he wants to and get it And then it, it just starts right. snowing yeah. a lot. And that's when you go, what the fuck is this film doing now? 
he's, he's almost like he wants to get it just right for when the children but, Yeah, arrive. but it starts snowing as he does it. It's almost like he's making himself Christmassy he, and the world Christmassy. Yeah, I know what you're saying. From listening to what you've said, it's magical. That's what you're saying. It's yeah, truly but, yeah, magical. I, I liked it. It, was me- it. it starts off mental and then it goes all nice. And then... You think, what's he going to do? And the nurses come out and the doctors come out and goes, what's this at first? And then he goes, I've got loads of presents. He goes, oh, we're going to need more people to get the presents. And they warm to him as well. Everybody yeah. warms to Harry. And he doesn't do anything nasty. He just gives them all presents and then buggers off in his transit van with the sledge on the side. Slay? Sledge? Slay. Slay. Holy shit. Get fucked. Well, now, 50 minutes in, and this is my favourite scene of the film, and this is where he makes his way to the church carol service. This is a bit that I felt I'd missed something. Like, I was rewinding and fast-forwarding going, who are these pe- I know some of these people. Who are these people? Now, I think the deleted scenes I talked about earlier may have explained a little... Who these are. Yeah, a little bit more about why these people had angered him and he'd focused his anger on them. Um, so as the congregation kind of leave the carol service... But one of them is the main boss from the toy yeah, factory. Yeah, one of the execs, yeah. yeah he's from there. Uh, Jolly Dream. So as the congregation leave the church and make their way down the stairs, Harry greets them. They kind of start to make fun of Santa. Yeah, there's two young blokes and a young lady. Yes, yeah. they, they make fun of him. And then the shrieking, psycho-like sounds as he stabs one person in the eye... And hatchets another two on the well, head. Yeah. He's got a little toy soldier with the, the metal sword. And he pokes yes. it straight into one of the eye. And it, it well, it's a weird effect because it's like yellow stuff squirts out. Well, and a blood. I thought it was quite gruesome. Yeah, because yeah. until that yeah. point, we'd well, not nothing. had anything. Nothing at all. And it was quite shocking in that respect because it was a complete and switch. And this is halfway through the film at least before you see that. Yeah, he goes down. And then... He gets a hatchet out and bashes someone on the top of the head. A couple of people on the top of the head. But I didn't know he killed the woman. That was a bit I didn't... You don't really... Because you just see the top of the head. You don't... You see him lying there and you go, oh shit, killed the woman as well. There and, we go. And as Harry runs off, it kind of then shows the shot again of kind of 30 people on the stairs with three people dead in yeah. front of them, which I thought was quite... I thought... And, and it's, I, it comes out absolutely out of nowhere. And because... And let's be honest... There's nothing that shocking after it or before it. No, this is the standard kind bit. of horror scene. And I think I had seen this bit, like they were showing it in a clip, which possibly ruined it a little bit because I kind of went, oh, oh, this bit. Yeah. But even so, it, because I think that's, like I say, maybe for horror films just fucking, I guess most slashers just keep having to have kills because people get bored. But when you do that, you lose... The whole value of them getting killed. This because is it's more, not shocking. It's not horror. This anymore. is definitely more jarring because yeah. there's a contrast between him going to the children's hospital and practicing his jolly ho 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 to then him stabbing somebody and in the eye. And also, there was there's nothing preceding it that would give you you think oh it's a psychological kind of thing where he's going losing his mind. He's delusional, but he he doesn't seem provoked at all. And then the next thing you know, maybe because. They cut a bit out. He's killing three people that we don't really know why, but no, maybe no. may connected to the big boss that's in the church as well. That's I, all I, I would I mean, tell. the people he's killing, we absolutely don't oh, there give are a souls. shit about. Yeah. So, there you yeah. Go. so you almost, as with most of these films, when you kind of follow him as his life collapses, you kind of root, you almost end up rooting for him more than anybody else. Yes, that scene was uh, not without merit. I thought it was good. In a daze, he wanders into another party and enjoys well, some they drag, time. Well, they drag him in, don't they? Yeah, I think he's a random Santa. Yes, he doesn't wander in. Yeah, he gets he gets dragged in yeah. and does some dancing. Yeah, this bit uh, dragged a bit for me. It's unnecessary. It's padding. Yeah. This is a bit they could have cut out and put the other bits back in, maybe. But there's a nice bit with a little uh, is it Angeline? Because there's a running theme that he thinks she's a good girl, and I think Angeline is there. At the yeah, party, and she's there at the end, so they've got a yeah, relationship. So he, like, he, he, you know. Everybody's enjoying him being there, everything's very jolly. And at one point, he talks to the children there and he talks about mm. obey your teachers, listen to your parents, but if you're bad, I'll fuck you up. 
I don't think something along yeah, those no, lines. Yeah. But yeah, he, no, you get. You said you'll get something bad or something. Oh, that sounds oh, wrong. Hey. I don't. Oh know. ho ho! Yeah. But yes, he, he kind of it's and it's a like, harmless scene. Yeah. But then Harry makes his way to Frank. Remember Frank from earlier in the film who duped him into doing the night shift. Harry goes to Frank's family home. He tries to. We have this. Then yeah. again, we have five minutes of him trying to get down the chimney and it turns out he's made himself too jolly and he can't fit down. And also, most chimneys have a kind of flu system. Yeah, th- th- this you would never, know. as we know, it would never work anyway. It's not practical. Well, we're led to believe, though, at the beginning of the film, the dad um, dropped, popped again, down the chimney. But that, I'm now going to go with that's a child's memory of what occurred. Oh, so, wow, you've looked at it on so many different fucking levels. <laughs> anyway, because he's a bit fat, isn't he? So he couldn't climb. Yeah, you, you see him get stuck, stress out for a good five minutes, then you just, you then see him slowly walk off. The roof down a ladder. I was a bit worried about him falling off or something, but yeah, he has to clamber down the ladder and then, like a common criminal, he has to climb through an open yeah. lower window. Yeah, he creeps in and he ends up leaving some presents for the kids again and we have a bit where the kids kind of see Santa and they, they're all excited. And then he... <laughs> well, he hovers over Frank's bed, which he's in there with his wife, and just puts his... Big sack on his face. Yes, he suff- tries to. He suffocates oh. Frank with his sack, sack, with his big Santa sack, and then he sucks. Doesn't he his... say something before he does it? Or something? Yeah, I have my sack. No, 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 can't remember. <laughs> but then he slashes Frank's throat with the star off the top of the Christmas. For some reason, they've got a Christmas tree in the bedroom. They've got a Christmas a full. It wasn't a full get tree one. in next to the bed. Yeah, when he slashes his throat with the top of the <laughs> gruesome. Um, he falls backwards onto his missus, who then starts screaming. Who's stricken with horror. She can hardly... Well, no, he's just landed straight face first Plop, on her. Popped on her. Yeah. And she's... Well, she can't even scream at first. She's silenced by te- sheer terror. Yeah. She and, that, and, and he tries horror. to... And he, so he slowly walks out. The kids go, all right, um, and smile at him. And then she starts screaming again. So that's when he goes, oh, shit, and legs it. And this one, it goes a bit like Frankenstein. Uh, Harry Scarpers. Christmas Day. Woo! Harry, all dishevelled looking, like a really bad Santa. Not the film. <laughs> covered in dirt, in not he now? Yeah. He's all looking dishevelled. He goes back to the factory, actually. Wakes up, goes back to the fr- factory and trashes all the sub yeah, toys. Well, he just starts all the conveyor belts, really. Yeah, he trashes I mean, it. He could have just gone mental. And then he climbs up and he kind of Washes overlooks it. all yeah. the destruction. Yeah. yeah but, but, but as a Santa, he's just... He, I think that's the, the overriding message, isn't it? What's that? I don't know. Um... We're back at the police precinct where they're doing a Santa usual suspect. Yeah, this is obviously meant to be amusing, isn't it? And it's not, but I've done a drawing of all the Santas lined up. Look. Do you know what? Meh. Here. Meh. Comments? No. Fuck you. <laughs> Santa usual suspects. I quite liked it where the cops were trying to line up and get people who witnessed the brutality at the church to try and identify the Santa that's um, killing people. The cops are in it very briefly. They aren't worth mentioning. As usual with most of these films, they do fuck all. So there you go. Five minutes. Pretty pointless. Harry tells Phil, I finally found the right notes. I can play the tune. Again, this bullshit that we don't understand, but it's not worth mentioning. But I've mentioned it. Harry's van gets stuck on a Christmas street and he runs. For some reason, he goes into like a very suburban street they're really nice lights, isn't they? They've got yes. all these rings. It's all little, like Home Alone kind of street. Well, Beautiful. Yeah. Someone mentioned it's very Spielberg and I forget how. You know, looks like Spielberg esque. Yeah. Oh, get fucked. <laughs> but like Gremlins and that, there's like lots of lovely lights and it's lit Beautiful. very well and all that. For, for a low budget film, that bit looks quite impressive. Yeah. But it, this bit is unusual. I mean, I wasn't sure what was going off and I think it's done all for artistic reasons because. Of the torch bit, which you go, what the fuck is this bit about? Well, he, he seems to 
he ends up on a, in a back alley where he has a bit of a this bit I thought was just completely waste of my time where he has a knife fight with some people. This is weird. Yeah, but I, I didn't mind it because it, uh, then is it Angelina Jolie? Yeah. No, Angelina, the young little oh, girl. Oh, so again, uh, so the, da- the dad goes, "Oh, get away from him! He's that maniac we've heard about on the the TV." And the dad's got a, a switchblade. Yeah. Okay. Well. Well, he's naughty, enough. but uh, he drops it, and then Angelina, his own daughter, picks it up and gives it Santa. Yeah. Or holds it for a bit. I just thought, fucking hell, you're going to kill your own dad. That would be a bit... I thought somebody was going to get stabbed with a knife at that point. I thought either Santa or a dad. But but... it's quite tense. And it was quite unusual that such a cute little girl was holding a flick knife at her own dad. Yeah, I, I, I looked at it a different way. I thought it was all guff. But, yeah, okay. It, it, but it provoked evoke... what happened next, along which is evoke... the yeah. torch bit, which is the, the Frankenstein bit. So there's loads of arty shots then of him running away in dirty back alleys. Dirty. <laughs> They're dirty. Even though it's a very well lit At one bit. point he even dives head first in some, into some garbage. That, <laughs> that bit's fucking mental. Yeah, I don't know what that is. But then you see the torch being lit and then you see lots of arty shots of just torches. You can't see the people holding them. It's just the torch moving and, and, in darkness. And this is where you reference back to Frankenstein because we're in 1980 and, and the, you've got the, torches the to... villagers, uh, the mob, chasing him with torches. Yeah. Now that the it's new... a bit literal. I yes. mean, they could have just got ah. torch, literal torch lights. To, you there's, know. there's kind of lots of shots of feet chasing and him. Yeah, and the, the early on it does this as well. There's a bit where you, think, you see him running away and you see his feet and you go, oh, that's a good cut. But then you just see the pavement with no feet on it as a cut, and you go, "Why am I looking at a pavement?" Yeah, it's it's, it's unusual. <laughs> like I say, it veers from the arty to what the fuck are you doing? You know, everybody knows the Santa is a killer, and they all start chasing him. And Harry manages to escape and make it back to Brother Phil's house. They get into a heated argument, and Phil, the brother dishes out some retribution and starts strangling him well, yeah, until, Harry, <laughs> until Harry passes yeah. out. Whilst Phil's wife watches on in horror, he ends up dumping Harry's body back in his van. I This is my favourite bit of the film, definitely, yeah. without a shadow of a doubt. As Phil is panicking because he thinks he may have killed his brother as he dumps him in the, um, in the van, Phil, um, Phil is overcome with horror of what he's done. Um, it keeps switching back to Harry slowly regaining consciousness, <laughs> and then Harry re- and raises he, his when he fist. clenches his fist for about two days, <laughs> and then just goes boink <laughs> and punches Phil and drives. He didn't need to punch him to be quite honest. Um, he could just drove off. Yeah, he but, just you know, fair bonks enough. him on. Well, the fair head. enough. He did get strangled by him, so you know, <laughs> I'd be a bit annoyed. Uh, it was that bit that I did put best bit of a, a film, maybe of any Christmas film <laughs> ever, was Harry <laughs> punching. It's like his Home Alone, isn't it? Yeah, it fair. was. It yeah. was really good. And now, who's going to do the next bit? <laughs> Shall I do it? you? Well, Harry, increasingly more deranged, avoids. <laughs> The angry mob and crashes his Sorry. crashes his van for a fence off a bridge. The van flies towards the moon, and we, the viewer, realizes that he was a mental Santa all along. Now you go. Yeah, because you said realizes, and that <laughs> didn't even fucking make sense. Right. So, he's and pumped. we, the viewer, realized <laughs> that he was a mental Santa all along. Right. Yeah. You go now. Right. Keep both of them in, I think. <laughs> so he punches Phil, his brother, drives off, and he's then the torch mob comes out, and he goes, "Oh shit!" Veers off a bridge, goes through the fence, and Phil's fallen down. This is a weird bit, and it's a bit shit. If you look as Phil rolls down this hill where the bridge is, you notice the covering, which is meant to be the snow, is just a blanket, and he's <laughs> pulling Rolling it away. Down. Rolling down a blanket. Yeah, he's just rolling it off. Unfortunately, you see magic. some of the some of the blanket falls off. Why anyway, why you reckon? I reckon it for everyone, all the kids that watch this. So he rolls down there, and then he watches as this van, and it just carries on going up into the sky towards the moon, while um, the end of uh, 
a Christmas. No, uh, it's the words of uh, oh, and to on. all those a good night. I can't remember. I'll have to. We'll have to. Absolutely, a hundred percent fine with that ending. Oh, I love it. I love it. I loved it better than. Well, it was like you had either two an actual options, Christmas. Then the van crashing and he dies. Yeah. Like, well, what would be the point? Unless of that? he came out as a flaming Santa. Ah, flaming Santa. Ho ho ho! I'm on fucking oh, fire. Oh fucking ho! That's the end, isn't it, of the film? An hour and thirty-six minutes of Christmas cheer. Beautiful Christmas Evil, nineteen eighty. Let's review the film. Mark it out of ten. Not get to the point. Let's review the film. Beautiful. Do you want to go first? Can do. Um, I wasn't sure because I thought it, it's a bit arty when when someone writes and directs and it's quite cheap. It's they are literally the auteur, so generally the control of every fucking thing. And I have a feeling it was Lewis Jackson and Brandon Maggett or Margot or Marg- Margot, whatever. Full control. Yeah. Generally, them two saying, you've got to be bombing out around the twist and I'm going to keep your camera on you for fucking ages. Knock your socks off. And he, and he generally, luckily, he, he, obviously, he's meant to be mental, so he's mugging it a bit. But generally, he's... he's He's pretty much. He's not overdoing it. He's not going crazy. He's meant to be a bloody Santa Claus, so he is going to go nuts. He's meant to be larger than life, isn't yeah. It? So it kind of lends itself to that. And um, and you don't. It's not. You don't necessarily feel sorry for him, or you know, rooted for him or nothing. It, it's more. You just. Well, that's that's where he is. He's a bit nuts. He doesn't know what he's doing, and he's decided to go down this particular road, and it's crazy at the end, which makes it even. Batshit, and again, it could have been just in his head. I don't know. Um, but I was, even though I'd read a bit about this, I realised many, many years ago there was some favourite Christmas films that certain people are like. Like John Waters really uh, likes this I, film. I, yeah, I'd heard he liked this film, and I get it. Um, I'm not a massive fan of all John Waters films, but I kind of like the subversiveness of his films, and this is definitely that. It is. It's not a normal horror film, and it's definitely not a normal art film. It's not a slasher, but it's definitely, I would say, an unsung classic, really. I'm giving it seven and a half. It's, I thought it was su- surprisingly, even if a little slow, not a character study, that's too poncy, but it is. And because it's got that shocking bit in the middle, that makes it good, and the ending makes it good, and the acting of the guy, main guy. So it surprised me. Wow. Better than I thought it was going to be. Seven and a half. I know. I'm giving Holy seven and a half. Holy shit. I ain't giving seven and a half Christmas. for ages. I know I'm being very... Uh, Christmas has come early. Oh, baby. For uh, Christmas has come early for uh, Christmas Lewis Eagle. Jackson. Oh. Holy shit. All right, get on with it. Will... I like this. Will, Will I add this to my annual Xmas film list? We've already talked about this because mm. every year I watch Black Christmas. It's a wonderful life. Muppets Christmas Carol. You know what I might do? Maybe once every two years for this. I, I don't think I would watch it every year. I think Brandon definitely was really good as Harry. It's good fun. I think in places for me, it dragged horribly. But then so does Christmas, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. The kids were also a bit annoying. Um, again, so does <laughs> that's yeah, the same so as Christmas, isn't yeah. it? And in um, real life, yeah. It's not a classic, but it's definitely not a waste of time. So I'll be watching it again. It's curious. It's weird. Strange. Yeah. It's cheeky. I really, really liked it. But I don't know what any of that means, really. <laughs> I Seven, because I did like it, and I would watch it again. And I think he is really good in it. Yeah. And I'm just surprised, because I don't... When I look back, what did I say what else he was in? Maybe... Dressed to Kill. Dressed to Kill. That was it. That's the only thing I could really find where I thought that piqued my interest. So... Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. What do you think about that then? Uh, no, I agree. Well, originally, I was going to go lower, Think. but you've kind of the way you talked about it. You almost encouraged me to raise them up. <laughs> but yeah, I I quite enjoyed it. All right. Okay. Anyway, so that's Christmas Evil. 
Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Ho, 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 everyone. And have a happy new year. Thanks for listening. And happy holidays. Uh, and whatever you celebrate at this time of year, not yourself, uh, it's all great. And um, have a good new year and all the best in 2024. Cheers. Thank you. All right. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas.